There's nothing more American than fantasy football. Even pro athletes love the competition. Should I start you or John Brown? It's a legit question. There was even a network TV show centered around it. But who invented fantasy football? And how did they do it? The story of the newest, greatest American pastime will blow your mind. I'm Jerry, and this is a clutch original on the insane rise of fantasy football that started in a hotel room. Fantasy sports got its first introduction in 1951 in the form of baseball. Entrepreneur Dick Seitz introduced a board game called American Baseball Professional Association. From there, Stratomatic was brought about for cards and statistics. But it wasn't until the 1960s where American football got its first sniff of the fantasy world. And in 1962, fantasy football began. It was introduced by someone who was very familiar with football already, Oakland Raiders part owner Bill Wickenbach. He was dubbed the father of fantasy sports. Wildly enough, many of the original league members had bright futures in the professional sports world too. Ron Wolf became the Packers GM and Scotty Sterling had executive positions with the Raiders, Golden State Warriors, and the New York Knicks. But how did the league come together? And what was its name? Wickenbach brought all his friends together in a New York City hotel as part of the Raiders business trip and created the Greater Oakland Professional Pigskin Prognosticators League. But you can call it the G-O-P-P-P-L for short, because that's a mouthful. And it was much simpler, but very similar to how fantasy football is played today. Each person drafted actual NFL and AFL players, and based on how they performed in game, their teams earned points. This was the full initial breakdown. Each team drafted two quarterbacks, four halfbacks, two fullbacks, four wide receivers slash tight ends, two defensive ends. You started one quarterback, one fullback, two halfbacks, and two receivers slash tight ends. And this was the point system. 25 points for an offensive touchdown, 25 points for a field goal, 10 points for an extra point, but 200 points for a special teams or defensive touchdown. Kinda crazy, right? The first fantasy football draft was in August 1963 in Oakland, with 16 total participants. The original GOPPPL was said to be active through 2015 and thriving. But how did fantasy football get out to the masses? Since the idea was whispered in a New York hotel, it took nearly another decade before fantasy football went public. In 1969, one of the original members of the GOPPPL, damn I'm tired of saying that by the way, Andy Mosalimus did just that. He brought fantasy football to the Oakland bar King's X. As Mosalimus owned the bar, he knew how to swing his customers and bring in entertainment. And it really brought a bar energy to the fun before the internet. At its very peak, 200 teams were a part of the King's X Fantasy Football League and it brought weekend energy. Every single team was required to show up to King's X before 10 p.m. every Friday night to set their rosters for the weekend, making for a memorable, and an extremely profitable Friday. From there, word to mouth grew the game at a national level. Fantasy football leagues were showing up everywhere. 1978, DePaul University. 1980, Case Western Reserve University. 1983, Morris School. But it wasn't until 1985 where fantasy football would hit the internet. 1985 brought about the first internet-friendly fantasy football league. Grandstand Sports Services introduced it online, and just two years later, an even bigger jump was made for the fantasy football and pop culture. Because in 1987, the first magazine fully dedicated to fantasy football was released. The Fantasy Football Index. Fantasy football was gaining traction, and businesses started to take advantage of that. Annual competitions like March Madness's Bracketology and Tournament Challenge seemed commonplace, but that didn't start happening until the 90s. This is when fantasy football started getting challenges involved. In 1990, the pigskin playoffs were introduced and there was a big reward. It was a weekly competition announced in major newspapers and all competitors had to do was call a toll-free number, choose their players, and every weekly winner won a trip to Hawaii. Pretty simple, right? Fantasy football was becoming massive nationwide and sports networks were starting to take notice, introducing their own versions of fantasy football. 1996, ESPN started fantasy football on their platform. In 97, CBS introduced an online football competition. 99, Yahoo introduced fantasy football for free, beating out competition with the zero price tag. 
And in 2010, the NFL started their own fantasy football league on their website. Even pro athletes themselves have been involved in the realm of fantasy sports. Some for good and others for bad. Like on May 27th, 2022, MLB player Tommy Pham slapped Jock Peterson because of fantasy football. Pham played fantasy football with Peterson and hated Jock's internet trash talk so much, he said, the next time I see you, I'm gonna pimp slap the shit out of you. And guess what? He did. Players and coaches have even made their own jokes about fantasy football to motivate the players on their own team, like Steve Smith and DJ Moore. But there's a good reason for his popularity. Today, fantasy football is a billion dollar industry. In the 2020s, the Fantasy Gaming and Sports Association said the industry had an insane value of over $7 billion. Ad revenue alone brings in over two to five billion every single year. And the growth today is ridiculous. In 2004, there was 13.5 million North Americans participating in fantasy sports. That number may seem like a lot until you compare it to what it is today. Through the mid 2020s, there are over 60 million people playing fantasy football alone. Since its introduction in 1962, fantasy football has evolved into one of the biggest businesses and passions for Americans. And it's a huge reason as to why many people just watch sports. Just imagine taking an idea from a hotel room and turning it into something of this level. What's in the future of fantasy football?